Prince, of course, can opt for our jungle river cruise or for a close-up look at our majestic... None of these attractions are ready yet, of course, but the park will open with the basic tour you're about to take. And then other rides will come online six or 12 months after that. Absolutely spectacular design, spared no expense. And we can charge anything we want, 2,000 a day, 10,000 a day, and people will pay it. And then there's the merchandise. And I can personally Donald, agree. Donald. This park was not built to cater only for the super rich. Everyone in the world has the right to enjoy these animals. Sure, they will. I mean, what, we'll have a, a coupon day or something? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gee, the lack of humility before nature that's being displayed here um, staggers me. Well, thank you, Dr. Malcolm, but I think things are a little bit different than you and I had feared. Yeah, I know. They're a lot worse. Now, wait a second. Now, we haven't even seen the plan. No, Donald, 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 let him talk. There's no reason. No, no, I want to hear every viewpoint. I really do. Yeah, yeah. Don't you see the danger, uh, John, inherent uh, in what you're doing here? Genetic power is the most awesome force the planet's ever seen, but you wield it like a, a kid that's found his dad's gun. It's hardly appropriate to start hurling <laughs> generalizations. Yeah, yeah, if I may. Um, I'll tell you the problem with the scientific power that you're, that you're using here. Uh, it didn't require any discipline to attain it. You know, you read what others had done, and you, and you took the next step. You didn't earn the knowledge for yourselves, so you don't take any responsibility for it. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it and packaged it and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now you're selling it. You want to sell it. Well. I, I don't think you're giving us our due credit. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Condors. Condors are on the verge of extinction. And if oh, I was no. to could not know if I was to create a flock of condors on this island, you wouldn't have anything to say. No, hold on. This isn't this isn't some species that was obliterated by deforestation or or the building of a dam. Dinosaurs. Uh, uh, had their shot, and nature selected them for extinction. I simply don't understand this Luddite attitude, especially from a scientist. I mean, how can we stand in the light of discovery and, and not act? Oh, what's so great about discovery? It's a violent, penetrative act that scars what it explores, what you call discovery. I call the rape of the natural world. Well, the question is, how can you know anything about an extinct ecosystem? And therefore, how could you ever assume that you can control it? And you have plants in this building that are poisonous. You pick them because they look good. But these are aggressive living things that have no idea what century they're in, and they'll defend themselves violently if necessary. Dr. Grant, if there's one person here who could appreciate what I'm trying to do, the world has just changed so radically, and we're all running to catch up. I don't want to jump to any conclusions, but look. Dinosaurs and man, two species separated by 65 million years of evolution, have just been suddenly thrown back into the mix together. How can we possibly have the slightest idea of what to expect? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You're meant to come down here and defend me against these characters, and the only one I've got on my side is the blood-sucking lawyer. <laughs> Thank you. Well, they're here. 